what I asked the board is, as the numbers continue to explode, how we have people here with masks or that, if you're going in upstairs, you definitely have to put a mask on. Um, how are people feeling right now? We're okay. Maybe we're sitting in a super spreader event. What better than the library is? <laughs> And I think the governor has since announced something today about towns being able to make their own choices for mandates. Did anybody else hear about that? It did yesterday. I think it was. He was talking about the same sort of thing. The it's up to the towns. It's to, up to yeah, to yeah, yeah. yeah. To do something. Yeah, yeah. And to go hybrid as well. And I mean, in more and more receive. Folks are going hybrid, so we'll just everybody play it by ear, I guess. It's it hard sometimes. My internet's pretty bad, so yeah, I'm right. to attend for it. So I'm very appreciative, even in circumstances. What's that? Yeah. Oh, we've got it here. Yeah, yeah. If we decide to the point where mine's in the truck. Okay. No, I think I, again, this sort of everybody's everybody's got a. You've had a booster, right? Yeah. Figure yeah. out your look. I haven't had my booster yet. I'm getting mine Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I got mine Friday. Bill's got his. Uh, none of them gave a bottle. I figure I'm getting mine Friday because I know Saturday. Oh, you ain't had it yet. Yeah. No, I'm getting it Friday. I'm getting Friday. Other than being cold. <laughs> okay. Well, that's sitting out in the woods hunting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with your booster. Okay. Um, glad we don't see we have the library. Do we need any changes to the agenda or public comment other than library? Uh, sure. Yes, no. Sure, it, absolutely. It recorded now? I it, it, yeah, I think he, Yeah, okay, Ron. This sure. conference will now be recorded. Magic. Okay. <laughs> And because we're, we're recording, roll up a comfortable seat so that it, you can get picked up on the mic and introduce yourself, please. Or come up here and we'll turn it back. That's right. Turn around for you. Have a comfortable chair. Um, I have a little bit of a concern. Um, it's about a road name. Um, my parents' development was probably at least 15 years plus ago. They were given a road name and probably seven years ago, sometime between 15 and seven years ago, that name was given to somebody else. Their name that was given to them was never recorded at the town. Your parents' road name wasn't recorded. Right. Okay. Gotcha. It was given by the select board. Gotcha. And there were select board members at that time that remember doing it, but it was never recorded with the town. Okay. So the name was given to somebody else. Okay. And so then they say, oh, got to pick another name. This was seven years ago. So they picked another name. Just this year, Ron sent a letter to my mother that said the 911 board said you can't have that name. It's too similar to something else. Seven years. And so I guess my argument is what road name is safe in town? Any of them? What, what's the current name that they're saying is safe? I think it was Old Barn Road. It's too similar to other names. And I paid for a road sign for that name two or three years ago, never got put up. And now Ron says we have to buy another one for the new name. Because the 911 folks are saying that. Right. And I guess if it was a couple months after the fact, it would be fine. But seven years is a little ridiculous. And I think it should be pushed back, say, no, we're not doing that. That name was given seven years ago because. There's a reason for the name we had. It overlooks the oldest barn in Hyde Park. Oh, yeah. That's why we picked it. And, and that's not even the original name we had, but that's the one that we wanted because it fit. And um, I guess it's irritating to me that we have to go through that and then know the road sign's not a lot of money, but why should I have to pay for one when it's no fault of ours at all? So what road is it uh, so close to Rock? Well, that is Barnes Road. Well, that's uh, different. yeah, this, you're talking about the subdivision on Jones Road with the Dairy Haven Road. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ron, who who is the nine one one board? 
Uh, the state 911 board reviews all the town coordinators. So if we propose, we have to update the state system. So when we send up new information, they check it. And if they don't find any conflicts or errors, then they'll make the change to the state 911 dispatch system. So that's the system that all the emergency responders use. So if the town, you know, select board decides to do something and then they don't go through the rest of the process, then the, that information is lost. And obviously every year we get another one or two road names that have to come in. So if the information's lost, then that's kind of what happened with the Jones family. Uh, old with, farm, with the, old with farm the original plant. one, with the original one 15 years ago, okay. not the one six years ago, that wasn't lost. Yeah. Well, that was the one that the 911 board had an issue with, but the, the one 15 years ago, I think was the one that was lost. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'm talking about the one six or seven years ago. Why was that taken away from us? It's, it's just my point is what the no road name in town is safe. They no, can come. No, they have, oh, sorry, that's going to. Yeah, that's correct. They, they the towns propose the name and then the 911 board reviews it. And if it doesn't work, it has to go back through the system, which is what ended up with Dairy Haven. But six years later. Yeah, but, but that's what I, that's what my argument is wrong. I just is an awful delay there between when we were given that road name of Old Barn Road and then when we were told that we can't have it anymore. We weren't told until this summer. After they bought the sign. Yeah, I'd already bought the sign for it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, the, the timing is, is somewhat, uh, when projects like yours get delayed for many years, then sometimes that road name isn't put into the system until you complete the subdivision. So I, I think that's maybe what happened there. I don't, but yeah, but they're saying it sounds like, so anyway, so here's what I wanna do. How do we tell the 911 board that thank you, we disagree with them and we're keeping the road name? <laughs> well, I think there was a conflict. I think there's a conflict. I think what they were saying is that the person with the conflict, the old name that's existing that is a conflict would have to change. I don't, I'm not even sure who owns that road. Well, and, and what's the, do they, they just tell you that it's a conflict or it's too much like another road. Right, or right. It's, it's too similar to other names. It's too similar to other names. Okay, so it's not even yeah, as though they're two. Yeah, so one of them have a road name. Say yeah, exactly there's a number of them. Okay, we got it. We got it. And I don't know, we, we, we're not going to solve it right here because this is an issue with the state 911 board. So we'll figure out something. Okay. okay. Are you, Even Brian, is your family uh, uh, withdrawing the Dairy Haven Road name? No, I haven't done anything. But when we were told we had to buy another sign, it was a little irritating when we already paid for one. And we have to buy another one. Not that's a lot of money, but it's the principle of it. I think it's the name of the road that's the issue. As but opposed to I mean, we wanted that name for a reason. Right. Right. But what's Dairy Haven? That's the new name that we have chosen because oh, we were told we couldn't have Old Barn Road. Got it. You keep saying that. Yeah, that's the name that is on there right now. We had Old Barn Road for six years, and then we're told, nope, can't have that. No, I think our road is old barn road's appropriate name for that road being what it is. Okay. So we who knows where this will end, but it's <laughs> and if the states ignored it for six or seven years, we could probably ignore yeah. it too. Well, I get one other thing I've got, something different. Yeah. Um as I see the town is buying an excavator. Well, we keep trying, yes. <laughs> well, my opinion is I don't think the small town of Hyde Park can justify it. Um, I don't think they're gonna run enough hours, in my opinion. Um, I think they're better off hiring it done. I don't think we need a bigger crew. Um, we're limited on space to where it can be stored. And to haul it around, you gotta have a class A license. And as far as I know, I think only one person in our crew has one. Not that that can't be upgraded, it can. Um, but I just don't think Hyde Park can justify that $200,000 cost. Okay. Well, we'll figure it out. 
Go ahead. So I, Ron put me on the agenda that I wanted to talk about the road, which I turned out material C. Is, is okay. this the right time? Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Oops. So um, I've got um, three notes, two from residents, another resident, um, Wendy Price is on remote. These are board members from the Property Owners Association gotcha. on, yeah. on the Hyde Park side on Woodlands, which is a private road that uses the 10 bends public C4 and the railroad yeah. public C4. I think in the history, what this long time ago used to be C3, there are five houses on that road, three or four time residents of those. Two of us are elders, uh, elder families, and the third one has two kids. The, the road has continued to deteriorate. Um, there's been other secondary issues. We have stormwater issues, which Ron and a separate committee is working with. Yep. This is runoff from the building. Yep. And um, there's also the process to kind of get restored back to C3. The board has told me that they came here two years ago with a similar problem and to have the appeal to have it graded for safety reasons. And we're now at the part in providing some pictures that it's running over a culvert rather than through it, and it's eroding out to where we are concerned, especially uh, Wendy and I, and the families on there, we may get stuck during the winter. And we've already had the need for emergency vehicles to come out. And uh, as one of the comments here is, we've had comments from people from the town service, people, UPS, that this is like the worst road in Hyde Park that they have traveled. So I am I am appreciative of the help that we've had with Juan for this, but we're getting pretty desperate going into winter. And I'm asking, I'm begging, I'm beseeching, because we've got no other way to get in and out. Right. Part, the okay. public road. Part, part of our issue this year with roads that need to be graded. Let's see how I can put this slide. There are a lot of, our, our grading is way behind because of paving that just it's been a horrible. I don't know. Yeah, it's a uh, I'm sorry. No, it's a class four. It's a C four. It well, used to be a C three. We got we got a sense of permanence here because last month we just told some people on another road that we've not going to grade your road because it is class four road. And we don't maintain possible roads only for culverts and water. You, you rate, um, I think the, twice the thing is, is you maintain it if there was yeah. a yeah. critical issue with it. Twice, twice a year, and everything is behind. So right now, Mark won't give you a date because he doesn't know. The grader is basically being run full time, and, and everybody's behind. Um, it's on the list to get there, but all he can do is have it on the list to get there with everybody else. And, and again, there is, I think when I was talking to the process, if you want to upgrade to class three, the process that you that you need to go through. I understand yeah. that, ma'am, but it's right. not going to solve our problem if we have a safety emergency issue this winter or the road or culprit collapses where it's been uh, washed out. A class four road is supposed to be graded twice a year. Yeah. And we're supposed to maintain the water. Yeah. And so these got the water from this year. That, yeah. And the color pipe was full. With uh, coming down from the village. Well, All your water dumps into our field. Right. There's 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 a water different whole big project as part of the water mitigation stuff that we have to be doing that Ron and I know some folks that haven't been have been working on. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, but can I say something, please? A, a, a class four road is supposed to be graded twice a year. And this road has not been graded once this year. So can we just get to that point where Mark, even Mark has you on the list? Okay. And they will he will do it as they can get to it. They've got the grader going. Uh, again, truly going full time because of the major road projects that have been going on and the town had taken on the responsibility for doing that grading that has to be done perfectly before it can be paved. And okay, we're also a class four road with now three full time home sites on it. So 
I would yeah. hope that we could become more of a priority than other class four roads that don't have full year round residents. Well, that possible? Class four, excuse me, the other class four roads do have full time residents on them. Okay, so okay. you're not the only folks on a class four road that's full time residents. Right, but your water is destroying our I, road. I understand. You're that causing the village. road to get washed out. We're not causing it. If your water wasn't coming into our neighborhood, our road would be okay. Well, it's, it's, here we go. What does this list look like that we need to grade? You keep saying there's this long list of grading. That, so that, that every dirt road in town of Fire needs a grade for. Yeah. 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 Did you come down that noise fire road tonight? Cricket, yeah. Cricket Hill's the same one. Going down the all the new pavement. I'm not saying it's a town fault. They can come to pop over that they, they don't have time to get. So, and but they got it before they start plowing. Okay, there. so what's supposed to snow next week? Yeah, not plowing. well, they're just not plowing. <laughs> they're just telling you, talking to Mark, the grader is going like, all day, every day, and they've done lots of overtime. So, you need to contract with the person or somebody who's raised the road before winter comes. It looks like we've lifted it off too much for the road crew. Well, it's whole paving. So I mean, we say that right. Yeah. The attendance, if you look at the tax record, in front of the taxpayers in this case, oh, it's pretty close. Right. What <laughs> pays a lot of taxes in Morrison. Yeah. Yeah. The bulk of your anything taxes. across the river is, is Morrison. Across the river, yes. yes. But high car pays taxes too. And your taxes aren't. You got five houses out there. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, 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 I just bought it long. The bottom line here is I don't know what's going on there, but I haven't been there. But we, the town, shouldn't take care of it. Right? Two times that a year. That's my one time. Well, there, there's an issue. Where I think we got to look at it. And if we have to get together with the board, go down there and see what's going on. And that's what we got to do. Because class four roads are supposed to be graded twice a year. And we are responsible for the water run. Uh, Roland, I, I, Roland, I think we talked about this before, but I, oh. I would disagree with the mandatory two times a year. That I've never read that in our municipal general roads permit. It's not in the town policy. They the town pretty much does it wrong. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about requirements. We have we have lots of class four roads that get zero maintenance. We get some roads that are class four that get plowed for fire service, like Diggins Road, and we have class fours that get maintained for drainage and erosion control, which is a permit requirement. I don't having you repeat the two times a year, we do not do that and it's not required. So if the select board wants to set policies for different class fours, that's that's a bigger discussion. If the select board says mark inspect the roads for erosion control and gullies that is the permit requirement which is yep. what the select board did tell mark two years ago which is to inspect the roads for class fours see if there's erosion and fix it there was nothing about and there was nothing about guaranteed two times a year on every class four it's that would be almost impossible to do i know a lot of other towns do it and also now um the Diggins Road. What what classification is the Diggins Road under? Three to Byron four up. All right. Rest my case. How many times is that graded this summer? I have I have no well, we worked on it for erosion control over the last couple of years. So that road is and we didn't we didn't grade it on a regular basis, but you have lots of class fours that don't get touched. So what does what does the select board want the town town highway crew to do? Wait, wait, wait a second. So, what's the status of dealing with the the water that drains down and that group run? Uh, we've met on a preliminary grant application with Lamoille Conservation District to hopefully get uh, a, a design done this winter with the watershed consulting which will improve the culverts and drainage and all that 
uh, area. We call it phase three, which is from West Main Street Culvert, which is halfway down the hill out of the village, all the way to the Lamoille River. So that's how really what I'm coming for is we got a safety issue and we have got concerns that we're not going to be able to get out for emergency vehicles to get right. in into this winter. And I've been writing since the summer sometimes saying the road is continuing to deteriorate as the foreman looked at it. What's the condition? I, I looked at what it said about the regs and if the erosion is sufficient, then it's supposed to be taken care of directly. I uh, wrote to the foreman and Ron, and Ron's been providing information, but we're getting at the point where we're running out of time to do anything. And that, that's, yeah. that's why I'm taking up your time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's fine. Um, well, let me see. All we can do is talk to Mark tomorrow. How long is that road? Really? Not very long. But it's mm -hmm. it's an hour. It's an hour. It's really short yeah. and, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Run down the morning. Yeah. That's another call. Well, but wait, that's so it. It. Make it 15, sir. Yeah. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. What was that? Who's that? It's that's me. That you? And I oversee the road crew. Okay. And it'll get fixed. Thank you. Yeah, we just get everybody it. understood. Thank you. We, Thank we, you. Appreciate working through the, the drainage stuff. I think it's just a matter of communication to the right people. Uh, that's why I, I, I sent my note of apology if I had not done this properly. No, that's no. that's not it. You didn't know. No, no. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron, for your help. Okay. Wendy, thanks for exactly. Yeah, no, thank you all. If you look at the pictures, the uh, yeah, it, 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 it's a the river basin is what it is. You look at the berms are so high on the side. <laughs> And it's not, it, it, there's no way of fixing it until you put some gravel in. Yeah. Yeah. See the berms on each side of the thing? You just keep all the water in it. Can't just put everything on it. No, gotcha. That does resolve problems. I can look at my own road and see exactly what's on there. Just need it. Okay. Well, okay. Whoops, wait a minute. I'm going to get through all there. That's right. Ron, we're going to need to set up a time so we can go look at that, you, me, and Mark. I think we just need to take Mark. It'd be a long drive. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think the plan. You understand, you understand more of the logistics of the whole thing. That's why I want you there. Well, he's not going to yeah. be. When when think, when will you be? If you have looked at what he sent to you, his work schedule, you know he will be back in the office after Thanksgiving. Okay. Okay. So we don't want to wait. So I tried to call him and talk to him. Okay. Well, okay. Brian, the um, the the road conditions have multiple problems out there. One is the uh, surface itself, which Mark is aware of that he's trying to get class threes done first. And then he's going to move to class fours. Uh, the center road grading took a ton of time that would have kept up these class three and fours on schedule, but everything got pushed. The next step in the uh, railroad street is the winter planning when the select board will see a full design for drainage and you know, improvements and culverts that we're missing and all that business. So that's that's another project that will come hopefully for construction next year. Uh, that's the one that Watershed Consulting and um, Lake uh, we'll Conservation it. District are working on. So there's kind of a two two projects in one. Yeah, I, I think we just. I'll call Mark in yeah, the morning. Yeah, yeah. I'm just asking to go down and fix it because you're good. You're right. Looking at the pictures, it's not that. I don't think yeah, it's definitely, not that definitely need the grading. Sure. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, you, you got the pictures? Yeah. Could you yeah, see it's yeah. a riverbed. That's what I told you. Yeah. See what the problem is. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the uh, the library budget. Get a copies from you. Yep. Questions? Takes a long time to get to Maybe to start us off. I heard from one of our board members the other day that there are four there are four new B and B's in Hyde Park. And they got word from someone who was one of the patrons of those B and B's of how important the library was in terms of getting them information on what was happening in Night Park and how helpful they were just in orienting them to the town. And it wasn't news to us that the staff was that, that good, but they, they are appreciated by people who are coming through the town. There isn't any other place to go really to get that kind of information. Where why, why don't you just run us through it and tell us what your big need is when you, the thing with a small budget, when you do not even a particularly big increase, it looks stunning. So the big one is, that's Taylor. Taylor. I'm sorry? No, I'm just, okay, sorry. So the big one is payroll. Yep. And that is due to uh, to increase in in hours to the hourly job for uh, Ruth and for Christy, not for Amy. And so it moves it up to. Uh, our request is 74,795. From, from what? 65, 60, 56, four. Was that last year? Yeah. From 54? Yes. Yeah. From 56, four to 74, seven. Yeah. That is, um, a very urgent librarian request because volunteers are no longer available. There's nobody to volunteer. And Amy has a great concern that the library has frequently been staffed with just one person and she doesn't feel that safe. And the board supports that issue of safety and um, the fact that you, you can't be on three levels with one person. It's just not a safe environment. When alone, besides personal safety, we also have to consider when we're able to assist folks upstairs and for how long we can leave the main level unattended. When is it a good time for a bathroom break and make plans to pick up the mail? If there's only one person there, and that's it up. Librarians in general do not do just one job, they do several. So, so this increase is for more help or to increase it's increasing the hours of the two. Um, a to 20 hours each. From how many? From what? One is going from 7 to 20, and the other is going from 12 to 20. So, so you go 19. That's where I think it's, again, it's the whole, the whole volunteer thing through COVID is just going to show up more and more and through a lot of other places too. I just Amy you know, tried when they volunteers, I always go to the fire departments. Amy tried for months and months to grow a volunteer base and yeah. manage nobody. You can't pay people to work, let alone get them exactly. volunteers. Exactly. <laughs> for sure. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. She made another book where she talks about strange things happen in a library on a daily basis with one person on duty and you've got things like uh, a tip full, full attention needed to make decisions, uh, guide maintenance folks, elevator inspector, sprinkler inspector, plumber, annual maintenance, help a lost child, lost visitor to Hyde Park, you know, any other number of issues on a given day. She's there by herself. And she talks about also just the, the safety of it. 
if she's there by herself. Who knows, you know, people wander throughout the building. Yeah. It's a public space. But it's a great asset to our town. It's, it's, I'm not sure whether it's exactly covers, but I think this pretty much allows for two people to be on duty the time the library is open. Oh, all the time. time? Yes. Oh, perfect. Yeah. That was our plan. So if and I'm looking, we're doing $15 an hour, right? I'm sorry. 15, 50, 50 yes. for that for the new folks coming in, 15, 50 an hour. Did you find that spot on the spreadsheet? Um, yes. Oh, yeah. It's all. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. Hey, thank you very much. Exactly. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 You're right. Yeah, we'll see if we can get David. Yeah. I know. That's <laughs> why we're being kind of like a yeah. losing yeah. citizen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's what I said like when I can get <laughs> Okay. All right. Back to one of our favorite topics, Beam Road. <laughs> So, where do we stand on the neighbor? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Let's get past some of the Ladies, let's do some research. What's this? Okay, I'm going to get your hands on my hand. This is such a good address. Oh, it's just supposed to be starting to be dipped, right? That's where we left it. Ron, Ron, where are we with Beam right now? Okay, we've got reclassification question, which is where does the select board want to see the class three laid out? Uh, right now, there's a couple errors on the, the town highway map, which is up on the monitor. The okay. uh, section A to B is listed as a class three road, which is really an untraveled class four, like the rest of that road all the way to Cleveland Corners, Trombley Hill. Uh, the little spur that's listed is 52.08. Uh, that is probably somebody's driveway at this point. Uh, the connector piece that's not depicted here is the existing plowed route to the turnaround, which is from B to C. So the last meeting, the board left with a question of, do you end the class three at B and have a turnaround at the Clark driveway, or do you continue the class three for year round maintenance to C uh, along the lines of what we've been doing for a number of years? The uh, rest of that, the, the 52 town highway and the segment A to B are more cleanup because I don't think you intend to open that road up. We just have to turn it to a, either discontinue 52 or relocate it that's up to the state of Vermont. Um, I'll talk to them about that, whether they want to use 52 or just uh, you know, between B and C. Um, but A and B should be reclassified to untraveled. I think that's just trees at this point. Okay, that's good. Well, now we'll see if you agree with what we just think we agreed with. <laughs> Basically, we were having Discussion, we'll call it, as to how Scott and Sherry developed all of that right. going down past their, well, Sherry's house right. and down to the curb turn around. Uh, I talked to Sherry. Uh, she went up, as was suggested, and looked at Cricket Hill at the ditches that yep. were done up there. Yep. And she said she was okay with what that looked like. Okay. And she is fine as far as having a ditch down past her house. Okay. If that is decided. I talked to Scott today, and Scott said that he and Chrissy have no problem at this point with going as a class three as discussed uh, down to where the tournament is. And the is right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and have that have catch basin fixed up. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Make sure we get that in there. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. That's right. That. Right. Uh, but uh, so that's where we As far as I'm concerned, and I think everyone else around in the neighborhood is concerned, is we are in agreement that if you are in agreement yeah. to okay. go class three down where the driver runs. Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where it's. I think, and again, the issue became the ditching, what it would look like. By right. the right. And it answers the precedence that's been set anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's easy. What happens now? We plan. <laughs> I know. I know. Why are we all going to have a break? Wait a minute. <laughs> um, 
I, I guess with that, uh, Ron, we just sort of need to, should we vote on it, but that's what we're doing. And uh, No, you'll have a chance to vote on the next round, which is the legal process. So the town hired Matt Reed to do a road, uh, basically a road survey. That road <laughs> survey will be uh, modified to include the stormwater easements that are needed based on the summit engineering plan. Uh, once all those things are depicted on a survey, then the select board can warn a hearing and you're required to have at least one hearing with another site visit and vote on basically uh, laying out a class three to the turnaround and making those other two changes with uh, 52 and the AB segment. So there'll be three, three statutory changes under Title 19 that will uh, clean up the state highway map and establish the town's responsibilities uh, for year-round maintenance to the turnaround okay. so when that when that document is ready um we'll call a special meeting basically can i throw out a couple things sure that's it uh first it would be great if and when this all happens which i think we discussed very briefly last time if you could consider putting a dead end sign down at Barnfield Road that you don't have as many right. travelers coming up to figure out that they can't get through there. They can't get through, right. Because uh, I think that's a reasonable amount. You see a fair number of people just come up and turn around and go back down that I think they think they're going somewhere. I think in some cases that's they're lost as far as getting to the reservoir. Yeah, I was just going to yeah. say that. Uh, you know, they just don't have a clue as to where they're going until they come up. Uh, but that would be a be a plus if you're willing to do that. And the other thing that I don't know what you want to do, if you're going to call to the turnaround Highway 50, you have Highway 50 for the past year, basically, uh, that's, and so on, but Highway 50 is gonna be going in several different directions. You're going to have to rename something somewhere just to throw that out there. Uh, don't name a similar anything else. <laughs> <laughs> How about Old Barn Road? <laughs> yeah. No Barn Road. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. No Barn Road. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, just to throw that something, I'm sure Bob will look at it, but you know, 50 is going to go in several different directions if you don't change something. My, uh, I would change it all to 42 or something, and have 50 in it. Yeah, for the rest of the way across the town. Right, right. Whatever. And that's about all I have to say, unless you have questions. Okay. It's good to hear that uh, she uh, doesn't mind the ditching. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, well, yeah. See that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, give her a visual. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's good to have everyone who needs to do that. <laughs> but, and I appreciate the time of the place to go on for everything. But, uh, you know, certainly. It's what we get the big bucks for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. No, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad everybody finally got to it. Okay. Trying to just take some. And do we have any time for survey being done and all that? Should we move on to the next step? I would, I would say, yeah, I would say then December. Um, hopefully, we can have the package of all the legal documents ready. Wow. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't, say, he didn't that's, say what you that's, hear. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> when, when is the select board meeting? The 20th of December. December 20th. Okay. Well, thank you again. For okay, your good. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Yeah. Well, I know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay. Excavator. I have no idea where that's left. It was left with. Uh, we ruled out the one that uh, we talked about with uh, uh, Mr. Minosh, and because uh, that's no longer available, 
And so then it went to Mark discussing looking at the case versus the Volvo. And I never heard back from anybody on uh, uh, what was what or the comparison in price from the uh, whatever the if the case was still the same or not. What we do? What was wrong was that? Sure. With Pete, that what was Indy coming at thirty thousand dollars cheaper? He did. But when I went to operate it, they couldn't do the same stuff that the other one, uh, the other ones did. If you want it, and one of the bigger things when you're ditching or doing like that, you bring the bucket down. And if you go like this and want to smooth it out and, and realign it, pack it down, that type of thing. Granted, it'll do this, but it won't do this sideways. It won't do it uh, when you do it. It just the pumps are set up in a way so that they uh, only do in direction, which is down, up, or left to right type of thing. But if it's under pressure, it, it won't. It won't do it. And then it had this chattering thing when you went to move it. It would shake you just about out of the machine. And then they. They had, they looked into it and they responded quickly to it to look at the. Uh, it responded quickly. I mean, it, uh, uh, Pete's uh, crew responded quickly to it. They worked on it, but then I went back up and tried to operate it and it did the same thing again. When I moved the levers forward or backwards, it would just chatter. And then. Uh, like I said, I tried out the Volvo. I'd never hadn't tried out a cat, but I drove a cat similar to it. Got a video out if you want. Well, I, it seems in the crew and trying all of them that the Volvo is the is the better piece of the question. Um, and and now, you know, it's interesting with all the with all the federal money that's coming in. Um, I, I think over the next years, everybody, I mean, if you think of this year, how crazy all the contractors were, <clears throat> um, whether it's paving, building, anything else, I think they're going to go into a long spell of being really, really busy, which is terrific. Um, but it also means, I think, for small town, it's going to be impossible to hire people to come in and do small work the the issue um you know is do we want to prepare ourselves to be able to do more of the doing the culverts doing that sort of work doing it well or we also we don't we don't have to and then i you know um I know the opinion has been expressed that we don't need it. The crew feels, and and again, that with a with a better piece of equipment, you can do work in a more timely manner. Instead of having the backhoe that you're just picking along, and it takes. I'm just making up numbers here. You probably, but you can probably tell me, Brian, if I'm in the ballpark. Instead of something taking all day for the for somebody to do it, it takes them half a day. Well, that's another project you can get done. And we know there are there are always more projects than there are time to look at with the greater and what happened this year. So I I, I don't um, I, I think I say something? Sure. Um, and I didn't say we didn't need it. I know a kitchen has to be done. So a lot of machines can be rented and not have the ownership and not have the maintenance. I do it a number of times. Um, and it's just like when I planted corn, I had 220 acres of corn, it sounded like a lot. But my heart is done because an $85,000 corn planter works four days a year. Set and shed dressing. I couldn't justify doing that piece of corn. I think the estimator is the same way for the corn. I think there's numerous dealers you can rent machines. And well, I'm not, I'm not, let done. me just say, because you, yeah, you, you tend to more how easy is it, and again, looking forward, how easy is it to rent equipment? I, 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 it's I a matter of planning yeah. and availability. 
for if the if the piece you want is there, then you have to plan it in advance. Depends on how many other people are calling for the same piece of equipment. It may be sitting there for months before you uh, uh, you rent it, but it, it may be in demand and everybody needs it. Especially if you have like a big washout like we did sure, a number right. of years ago, and everybody wants everybody that piece of equipment. It. Sure, sure. There's gonna be times like that. You just put you you're not going to get it. The question is the, you know, again, the rest of the time and the, and the more efficient use of give, giving people better equipment to do a job is just going to tend to be more productive. But I'm, I, I'm, I'm not the equipment is. Broly, what do you think? No, I'll let Dave go. I'll let Dave go. Okay, Dave, what do you think? Oh, well, he's told me. He already told me once that back off and it's four to one. Well, it doesn't mean people don't change their mind with an argument. I agree they need excavator. Excavator will do the work twice as fast as a backup. Okay. I don't believe you need an excavator of that magnitude for a town high park. It's too goddamn big for the town high park. You can't park an excavator in any of right class three roads with closing the road because it comes over the center line. And to get out to, to run, and you guys have done these, you're going to ditch, you want to put your bone and, and your stick. You know, if you try to ditch up like this, you don't want to be right on that. Right? You, you, your top is going to be the trees and stuff, it will be written hoses every single day. And, and I think you could save the town $100,000 by going because just as. Sure, if I'm saying here, if we had a major thing, they're going to hire it down anyways. Then I'm going to do it myself. We don't have time to do it now. Why do you think I got time to do it? Yeah. That they're going to hire it just like the, uh, the uh, battle road culverts. There's no reason we can put those in, but we don't have time to have to hire it. And I, well, I thought, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but I thought some of that was signs too. And, and I don't, I don't believe that the town needs an excavator that big, that size, that size, because taking down the road, like Brian just said, the haul that you need a class A CDL, and I think Mark French is only one who class A CDL. But if you needed that excavator up on Cooper Hill, okay. you got to load it on the trailer, you're going to tie it down, you're going to have Mark picking it up, there, you're going to have somebody back it off, you're going to have. Somebody work it, you gotta load it up, mark it, bring it back. You you had a you had a, a smaller one, you could just drive it right up, drive the dog. You go to the time truck. I was gonna say the No, yeah. or, yeah. <laughs> you gotta have a class A for that. Yeah, you do now. Yes, you do. Okay. So you you have the same rolling, so you have the same situation no matter what size. That's you can't bad. you can't all buy a gun truck, certainly you gotta have a class A. Okay, but it's not but, that in the last couple of years. Okay. So it's going to, it would have to be all the Cooper Hill one way or the other. Isn't 10,000 pounds the break on that? The trail is over 10,000 pounds because there, there's uh, even because of these guys are hauling this equipment with the ton trucks, and they put that in effect, I'd say. Yes, but. but but still, I, I think it's all I think it's all the kill, but we go with it. And the major thing we're going to be going with it is ditching and, and putting in culverts. You take oh, okay, so, you yeah. take up you take a Volvo uh, EC sixty, you take a three eleven cat, something of that size. I think you're going to be a lot better off with the town. You can send two people up and do a job, and not have to close it up. You can put some equipment in there. Just like you did to the grave. Isn't that what size we are looking at? Roughly? No, you have 145 and forty But isn't that similar? That's to 18,000 pounds. No, it's 20 some odd, isn't it? Which one? The one you're looking at. The global? Yeah. Yeah, 20, uh, yeah 140 would be 14 metric tons, right? Yeah. What are you you're talking 25, 26,000 pounds. That's the same yeah. size of that. 18,000, 20,000. Okay, take your three eleven and then your EC60. Look at those 60s around here. Mirage, you know me, the four of my own? Yeah, okay, I don't care. I've done it. 
Brian, what do you think? Somebody needs to get three estimates on it, and uh, I just spent the summer doing that. I was so say. No, not me. Don't blame me. <laughs> I don't know. We should have agreed on that at the beginning. <laughs> like we thought, we thought we did. <laughs> we did too. <laughs> okay. Talking about this excavator since I've been on the select board. Yeah. <laughs> One bag of bits. I know. So, what would we like to do? Because I think we decide tonight we're either going to buy it or, or we can decide not to buy one. You know, with the with the differences of opinion in the in the size, I I can honestly say I really. Um, my only opinion is that I think anything that we buy should be the right quality to help whoever we're talking about doing their job do it well. Um, you know, we've we've we know that investment could um, improve the the quantity of work and the time, so consequently more work could get done. My question is, if you get if you get the smaller one, do you still I, I am making the assumption you still get that efficiency in time. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's just a matter of horsepower and what you're doing, but for ditching. Right. I mean, it's just a matter of the reach. What what you got for a reach? All that stuff is going to be calculated into it. What's going to fit the the bill for us the best? And there's variables on each machine, as we saw in the. And the different uh, bids that came in and stuff like oh, that and right, before right. the stick was so long or so short or whatever that type of thing and um buckets so what type of bucket you wanted uh, that sort of thing too um it's just a matter of more scoops to fill the truck before it leaves basically i think the horsepower the power to dig is, is there it's just a matter of the volume that you're moving at the, at the time to get it into the truck to get them headed out and have another truck ready. Right. If you if you're eight miles away from where you're dumping, you know you have to figure how long it's going to take them to get down there and back and have another truck lined up so that you're not the excavator isn't sitting there. You keep things moving. If you're filling it with a teaspoon, it's going to take you longer. If you're filling it with a a, a cup is going to be shorter time. Yeah. What did what was Mark's preference? Mark liked, as far as my understanding, he liked the Volvo. Yeah. That's my understanding. He never he never said anything um, about the size. Mm -hmm. He never commented if it was too small, too big, that type of thing yeah. on there. Um, that I remember. Yeah. Okay, and then. Uh, when we had Mr. Lowell and I can't remember the other gentleman up there, they were thinking that that was appropriate size as well. They were constituents of the town, and uh, oh, Jane, Jane do it? it would, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Something else for that, for that twenty-eight thousand pound machine. You put that on these blocked off roads, you're going to tear the piss right out of it. You do it all the time. Karen, well, Karen, they do it all the time. They drive them right up the whole road all the time. Screw you. Street fence. I just had a go right up to the brand new blacktop and pitch it. But I can't. Well, I see it because it stopped right in front of my door. I was going to say, you, you ended up with all of them all summer, Rolly. Rolly, um, while you can say, what would you recommend that we do? I recommend to stay where we work. <coughs> you go undersized and you're not going to be happy. And the boys are. We voted on this once, and we voted on the center road once, and we voted on this once. Let's get to the point where we either do it or we don't. I I, I completely agree. We're gonna we're we're gonna vote to buy something tonight, or we're getting out of it. Okay, Dave, you. Okay, we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna put on the table that here's what we're considering, and that's the larger Volvo. Okay, um, we have that price now. Um, and we know that we've got to have the trailer that goes with it. 
And I think we had Allie, if you look at it, had the, you know, run the numbers for the for the bank loan that are due one year and two years for 200,000. <clears throat> one year and five years. One year and five years, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. 200,000, right? Yeah. Okay, so going for the. Can we turn that TV around so Ron can see us? <laughs> no, Ron can see us on the camera up there. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 we can Yeah, we can see him. He's waving. Right. Uh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So in, in favor of purchasing the larger Volvo excavator, I think we just looked at one size in the Volvo, right, Brian? Yes. Am I right? Yes. Okay. All in favor of making that purchase and we'll do a roll call. We'll do, Brian. I agree on, on purchasing it. Okay. Dave. No. Rolling. Yes. Chastity. Yes. Susan. Yes. Okay. We're going to buy the larger one. Now, for financing, we've got the, uh, again, option one and option two. It's for $200,000. Um, we can do it for one year. Um, can you see the interest is, what, point? Seven one interest bank qualified under five years. It's fixed at one point five nine, which means okay. Jess, you did it. That seems the math down to the new. Well, she has it broken down. Yeah, wait a minute here. There's two. Oh, here we go. It's on the screen now. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. There is there isn't truly an original balance. So small it's That's yeah, I know. See, there's here's that. Look, 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 here we go. Yeah. There's the original two hundred. That's at the one point five. So Nine. That's forty one thousand worth of yeah. Interest or no? Yeah. And then what do we got for the other one? It's about ten thousand dollars of interest over five years. Yeah. So the five year being yeah. would be better. Yes, not that right. Can I, can I open up the box? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> we voted on it. Yeah. yeah. We get it. Yeah. Right. That's, uh, That's it. Uh, now how are we paying for it? How no, but I was just. <laughs> I was just gonna open up the box. They're not going to use it this way. Not at all. Correct. They won't use it. Why don't we set on it? Just for a little bit. I know Brian did a lot of goddamn work. I'm sorry about that. But think about all these rentals that are coming back in for the summer. All these rentals are coming back in throughout the winter. They've got two, three, four hundred hours on them. And I bet you. They're going to sell them. Okay. And you could probably get one of them machines with the warranty. I feel another Menage deal coming on. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, you know, you could get a second hand one and save yourself $20,000. That's, that's what we're. And you have six, seven hundred hours on it, you'll still, you'll still warranty it. And I was just down there Saturday, Burlington, and there's quite a few setting on Volvo's right here on CR Woods lot. And I don't know if they're already spoken for or not. 
as well. But if got... we, we've agreed to buy it, we could go down and talk to them now and see if they have something now. Well, we could, but right. I'm just trying to throw that out there to save the taxpayers. In a lot of times, they know what's coming in. Sure, oh, they do. They, know what's going to be. they rented it. They should sure. know. Right? Yeah. Right. I, I get those flyers and share with all the time. Run on the chair, run on the chair. And, the, and they're not going to use it this winter. Right. right. So if we set on it for another three months, you might come out a lot cheaper with a second hand. Is there a time restraint on the financing? Yeah. That's, that's what I thought. Well, well, we can go ahead and decide we're spending up to. Right. That's not the thing we should do. Right. right. We can spend not just $200,000. Yeah. So we got the money locked up, but then we can shop with Volvo. Right. That's just something that's, that I threw on the table. Yeah, but I think we should agree because these interest rates are really good. <laughs> yeah, these are great. And, <laughs> and, that's right. With everything that's going on, everything else is skyrocketing. I don't know if we want to risk. Well, we can lock um, that in. Lock, yeah, yeah. We can probably lock this in. Yeah. Lock this in and then, then shop. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, then shop. And if we don't spend it, we just put it towards uh, putting it back on the principal. Well, we don't have to do that. I just. No, no, no. I think I think that makes sense again. It's what we take care of the money and then and then you can shop again and stuff is starting to come in. You know. Once you, boy, they, there's a lot of equipment out there, but they have leased some. Yeah. Well, I, I think just as we we tried and we all agreed that trying when you know the Nash was willing us to be you know, and that was that. But well, but that was it was the same idea. It was saving this money for again something that was used, but you know, when you check and it's the warranty is good, you know. So this is really just I think doing the same thing. So I don't. I, I think that's the next. I think it's part of our job. Yeah, I think that's the next one. Yeah. Okay, so we, we won't throw anything at you. Know, with each so other. I move it. We accept the uh, um, funding for the five year plan. Yeah. Second. Okay. So, and, and well, we'll 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 have the money, and you can you can always pay it back. Um, okay, all in favor of it going with the five years for two hundred thousand? Well, well, we'll we'll have the two hundred thousand, and if we spend less, terrific. Um, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Aye. Okay, we're good. Is there? What was that? An abst abstention by Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay, let me see. Uh, God, I was really expecting to go until springtime. <laughs> I like that look. Well, I'm bringing the gym. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Two straws. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Brasso zoning permit update. So here's what we've been trying to figure out. Um, and and I've been working with Ron and we have with with uh, with Mr. with James as well that he and he that told him he didn't need to come tonight. What and I again I think this is one of these situations, and I'm sure people are running into them all over the place, that his delay and the cost and the everything, you just ran into COVID complications. Um, now, there have been folks building houses that have run into that, and they've come in and redone their permits, but they're like talking 150 bucks as opposed to 1300 bucks. And there isn't any delineation there. He's, he's not making any changes in what he wants to do. He just got, you know, he just got hung up. And <laughs> what we discovered is that we we have no procedure for for mitigating something like this so if we want to say and and again we told them we understand this has happened to a bunch of people how do you how how do we mitigate fees how do we make him not run back through because he does have to go back because things have changed 
and, and he said he's fine with, he needs to um, he needs to refile, which I think he has actually already done because there isn't any change. He's doing exactly the same thing. He's just needing to refile and have what, what and is permit. Once you get your permit, how, how long is it good for? Yeah. Uh, it's good for two years. Oh. It's good, for good. Two years. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for two years. And if the landowner asks for an extension in month 23 or before the 24th month start or 25th month starts, then they can get a one year extension. So um, James got his permit in 18, it expired in May of 2020, and he did not. Uh, COVID had started by then in March of 2020. He did not ask for the extension and his permit expired. Uh, and then, you know, this year we're, he still hadn't started it. And that's where the issue came up with uh, needing a, a renewal, basically. Okay. With, with that being said, I'd like to make the motion that we give Richard Brasso a two year extension on his permit at no additional. Well, he, he, due, due yeah. to oh, extenuating circumstances. Okay. So, so we don't send presidents. Everybody I'm, can come in. I, I'm exactly. I'm Ron, okay. Ron and I. We got there close with the language yeah. because he does. We don't have the author, authority to extend the permits. He's and he's filed and he needs to go back through. What we do need to do is waive having to pay. And, and what we can do is again, because other people have gone back to it and have paid. And I think his original, his current fee is like $1,300. He's already paid like almost $1,000. Mm -hmm. So that, that we, I'd say, credit his new fee with the $1,000 that he's already paid. So we'd have a balance with a new application of about 300 bucks, which he didn't. He wasn't having any problem. With. So it, it was just some. Yeah. Roll it and and again we put in that it's it's about COVID. That's right. So okay. we're not so he'll be, right. So <laughs> that it's like anybody else that has run into this is you know. Is yeah. Yeah, Ron. Susan, one, Susan, one suggestion is that because we don't know how many people are in this situation, um, to keep this kind of credit. Um, ability, if you will, on the fee uh, open as an opportunity for people through June 22, the end of June 22, which would be one year since the um, emergency order was lifted. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if people hear this yeah. and they come in, we can yeah. we can we've got Just space to, to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Got the motion. Motion. Right. Yeah. Yeah, see she's looking thoughtful down here. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not yeah. Oh, that's okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Do I need more information? No. Nope. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Yes. <laughs> yes. I get everybody opposed. I guess you say yeah, yes or right. no. I'm not sure yeah. what to say there. Okay. <laughs> anybody abstaining? Okay. All right. They took care of it. Back here. Stay at the bottom. Um, Service agency policy. Oh, that's about the number of days that that people have to file their requests, right, Ron? Yes. Okay. It was a small change from Kim uh, Moulton, so I, I put it on the screen, and it's just adding the days before town meeting instead of fixing a date because the date changes every year. Right. In in those two spots. Oh, okay. So there's a paragraph two and a paragraph three change. And then yeah. uh, requiring a half page in, in word format. That's just a technical thing to help us pull the town report together. Okay. That's it. So you got it. So it's just, yeah, which makes sense. So it's just 47 days before town meeting. How many days? 47. Okay, is that 47 business days or 47 calendar days? It's cal calendar days. Okay. Should that be added or not? 
Do you think? Uh, no, it's from the state law. So if there's any question, we'd go to that. Okay. Okay. Okay, so all in favor of making that change signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Um, the ARPA project guidelines. Oh, right. Okay. Right. So on on ARPA, the U.S. Treasury has issued guidance on municipalities that take the money, which we already have taken it. And for distribution and spending of the money, we have to follow their multi volume requirements. The two basic requirements are following a procurement policy and having uh, tracking of the expenses. When we're talking about the $32,000 that you approved going to the fire district last meeting, um, the fire district itself is not quite set up the way the town is set up. So there's going to be some administrative challenges there to meet all of the requirements. Uh, the response from the fire district, I'm talking to Dave Harvey and uh, Roger Audette, is that they would hire the people to help them comply because they're the only two people that are running the water district up there. So to do that, to actually hire the people to help them, the town sort of needs to help them comply with those initial guidance requirements, which, which is the procurement requirements for the engineering firm they want to hire and also for some of the administrative time. Now, under the ARPA rules, administrative time to comply with the guidance is eligible for reimbursement. So if the select board's okay with me spending time with the fire district, then I would basically be uh, tracking my time and charging that time to ARPA. And once they get their consultants and uh, finances in order for the project, which is a design project for water improvements, then I think the engineering company they hire will take it over from there. It won't be a long-term uh, commitment of the town to help the fire district, but it would be reimbursable. So that's the outline that I wanted to present to the board to see if you're okay with that. Uh, the other option for the fire district is to hire an outside person to help them with ARPA compliance, which is totally possible, but even doing that, they probably wouldn't need somebody very long and I, I think we've gotten off to a good start with some preliminary meetings and I, I think we're all good to work together. So it's sort of up to the board. It's some of my time, it's not a lot of time, uh, but it probably will last for three to six months before I would kind of let loose of that. Yeah, and how much time do you think you would spend on it? Uh, right now, I probably only have four to six hours in just the very beginning over the last month. and. I think probably just a couple hours a week, maybe for three months is what I'm guessing to keep things moving until the engineer is on board. So two hours a week. And then, and like I said, I do a, like a formal timesheet to recover my actual costs and benefits and all that business. So it won't be lost taxpayer dollars to the district. Uh, water districts, sewer districts are supposed to pay their own way and that's what they would be doing. But the the, the federal government would be paying it. For how many months you said eight hours for three? I think three. I think three months to get the project off and running and get the engineering company that they're going to work with set up. So by February. Yeah. So I mean, a couple hours a week to get them going, particularly get reimbursed for it, is that seems perfectly. They are residents of Hyde Park. Even though they're a water district. You're okay with helping them, right, Ron? Yeah, I mean they need they need the help to get going and they they're appreciative and they are serving, you know, 200 something people with 95 connections in Hyde Park. Uh one of the things that we're looking at with the planning advance, which you approve for the North Hyde Park decentralized sewer, is to take a look at the water district itself. Uh they are having some succession planning concerns about who runs it for the next 20 to 30 years. 
Uh, so we are starting that as a side project, but I'm not spending a lot of time on that. I just wanted to make them aware that at some point, if they don't have a replacement, whether that's a contracted engineering firm or uh, the town of Hyde Park or the village of Hyde Park or getting new people to run the district itself, uh, that that's not that that plan should be in place before it actually happens with um, the current two or three people running it, you know, moving away or stopping doing that work. So that's a I don't want anybody faced with you know no organization running that large of a water system. So that may be back on your agenda at some point, not not in the near future, but something we're starting to think about. Well, and maybe as they start doing some work up there, you know, the you know, folks up in North Hyde Park will start to see something beginning to happen. So maybe some folks will step up to the plate. So, so she optimistically. <laughs> right. I think that was <laughs> the library's been successful. Oh, yeah. right? Fire department, like, oh, you know. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna. We're going to attach it to the Jones Road thing there. It's the old Barn Road Water District. <laughs> so in, in December, I hope to have the uh, the sub recipient agreement between the town and the fire district ready for your review so that we can have that done and and have the structure done, figure out who's going to do what. And that will uh, bring us to the uh, um, able to select an engineering firm and get them going, you know, in January, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like a plan. It is that time of year again, the annual employee appreciation no. awards. Thank you. What did we get from last year? That was so three hundred. Wow. Sorry, I couldn't there's too many talk, too much talking. Oh yeah, yeah, just a second. We're just yeah. we're getting an update on goats. What what did we give them last year? Three hundred dollars a person full time. No, full, full time's 140 and part time is 40. The library people, I think, did theirs first this year. I think it was 500 for the director and 300 for part time and 100 for a contracted person. I don't know. I, I think I put that in your packet, but so they were the library trustees voted their staff already. It's just the select board. If you can vote your um, make your decision, then they would. Uh, be awarded in the first week of December when the select board gets your annual stipend. Uh, I I would make a motion that we uh, continue in 2021 what we did in 2020. I know I get what year is it right? That was motion correction. Right, we do. Second. Okay, we do whatever we did last year. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. It's like, don't call me on the price. It's like $30 for 100 weight. $12 for 100 weight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a brilliant move on their part. Yeah. Do they pass through? No. Nope. No. Stay there inside. Okay, just a second. We're having we're having a side conversation about goats. Sorry. Right. Sorry. We'll get we'll get that after. Okay. Yeah, if we did that, we took care of Mr. Brasso. Right, we took care of them. Town no orders. Uh, town no orders. orders. Okay, which are all let's see, Ron. Ron said them. This is where oh he did? He did. Well, yeah, they they were posted. Yeah, they were posted late today. There was some uh, technical and health issues that delayed the posting. Uh, they're on the finance page. If you can get to the High Park finance page, Kim brought down. I think the signing pages for yes, Susan. Yes, she did. Yeah, I got them. Come on, dudes. Come on, boot up here. There we go. Yeah, they're <laughs> we'll get you one of those little like one of those little magnifying things you put over. Yeah. I've got one right on the screen if I use it. Okay. 
I think our biggie this year is the, I mean, this time is the, you know, our school taxes. Whew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one hits you. Oh, okay. That's all right. Kim's been raking in the money today. Yeah. I felt it. <laughs> yeah, but not much on here except for the yeah. text. Yeah. Okay. Where's the here's the second one. Okay. Then while we're looking at this, do we have? I'm I'm at the garage. I'm at the garage, giving a little clue where I'm going with my conversation. Um, because we talked about the work that needed to be done and seeing if we could get somebody and do it. Oh, on the building, yeah, the on the building. yeah. And again, I attempted to find out what's going on, but he was doing other stuff, so I couldn't communicate at the time. And so uh, I, I was hoping that we'd have an ad in the paper to uh, um, with a list that I had generated of uh, stuff that needed to be done up there. And uh, so we could start doing bids on it. But uh, um, to get a better price, we may want to wait. That's what, one reason why I didn't push it too much is because uh, if we wait a couple of months and then put it out to bid, we'll get better prices. Okay. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, people, people. Oh. Did you say it was under the town treasurer? Or what was finance? It? Finance. Finance. Yeah, I say the big the biggie, the biggie is the school. Mm -hmm. and that's pretty <laughs> Mark did a good job. He caught somebody that uh, Country Home Center was uh, going to charge something to us. Like, what did it look to me? Let me do. Um, and he called me up and asked me if I'd charge anything. And I needed to know because of this project, if we found somebody to do some of the work. I said, no, I hadn't done anything. So he called him right back and told him not to accept that charge. It was on there. That, um, I don't know if uh, Country Home Center called called him or how he found out about it, but uh, but it was a significant, significant amount of money. Good. Especially yeah. lumber. It would have been large. Yeah, the uh, Country Home called Kim and said, we have somebody in here trying to order 200 sheets of 5 8 pressure treated plywood and wants to deliver it to some place in Johnson or something. Sounds and good. they they called and and we ran the horn and Brian and Mark and I were all like, what is going on? And they obviously didn't didn't complete the order. There goes yeah. the new job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I caught him. Somebody scared. 
I mean, you know, there's so many things like that that people do that I'm just, I'm so, I'm so amazed at. And so I wouldn't even think of doing it, never mind actually. You, you ought to see what I signed for, I'd say at least 50 nonprofits in the Mullen County because I do work for every one of those nonprofits. Oh, okay. And I, I'm on their accounts. And some people will go in and they'll say, uh, um, what's your name? Well, I don't see it there. Well, I, uh, let's put it under Brian Shackett. And if, you know, I get a, a call from him and said, what did you buy at this one? And that's good, because I didn't buy it, I said. And, uh, and what I've done is I've had to, because of the digital signing, people to scribble across oh, it. Yeah, Everybody right. does that. Yeah. I go in there and I do it print my name on every one of them so they can see that it's who it is yeah. it's uh, yeah. who's doing it and if it isn't that way yeah. i tell them then, then no, it isn't me yeah, yeah. so so uh it saved quite a bit of time and stuff and it makes the uh stores more accountable too now that person went in and ordered go sheets probably nothing would ever nobody would get a call it could very well could very well have happened that type of cheese but why would yeah I mean, hopefully they'd understand why would I park on something down in Johnson, you know, or right. something like That's that, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's an interesting world we live Especially in. Especially with the price of lumber, too. Yeah. Yeah. And put it on to somebody else and they don't. That's the other one. That's the other one. That's the other one. Okay. Yeah, okay. Those those are all, uh, That's the second. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. Not yet. The, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Not that it makes much difference. Oh, okay. Motion to uh, approve the orders at a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Well, I'm in the select board meeting. Okay. I'll call you back. Okay. Cool. Um, you. Okay. The world of money really is quite fascinating what people do. Here we go. I don't believe we're done with the uh, okay. Um other business, tax sale. Everybody paid their taxes. Here, Jasper and I were all ready to go out and scoop up properties from the town. <laughs> we were ready to buy them. Man, we were ready. <laughs> we were ready. This one's hey, Susan. <laughs> Susan, huh? Uh, Kim sent me the current delinquent tax report after the tax due. Yeah. The total amount due for the last three years, um, which is as of June 30, 21. Okay. Yeah. Is $14,057, which is probably a a record, if not one of the ultra low amounts in most municipalities. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And it just, I, I, again, Kim is, Kim is really good at working with folks before they end up so far in the hole, that, yeah. you know, um, and, and I think getting, you know, more and more people to just have it be part of, if you own a property, it's just part of your mortgage payment, you know, so you just, you know, you just don't end up in a hole. She really, we should. What, uh, only yeah. one account, only one account is on a major side outstanding. It's uh, one account for 13,900. So the rest are, you know, hundred dollars here, there. Yeah. Huh. Oh, well, yeah. And we're working on that one. Um, let's see next to schedule a GPS demonstration with the highway and Verizon. And they do yeah, that, that too, right? No, that, that's just an update. I wanted to make sure that um, on this particular one, uh, Verizon was told to wait until this week because Mark was busy with his field work. And we were hoping that the week of the 15th would be a transition week from summer to winter. Uh, that is, is the board uh, okay with doing a weekday thing? I mean, the highway crew will be available Monday through Friday. They'll switch to their winter schedule. Uh, do you want to schedule? Is, is it okay to schedule an early morning? Try to do it's a virtual thing, so it could be early morning, late afternoon, or do you guys have a preference, or just work with highway 
first and then let it let you know when it is how do you want to handle that for timing it's what it's when you get by from correct no they verizon does it virtual so a we'll lot will log in yeah yeah it doesn't really matter yeah we can all be in different places yeah, I just didn't know if people were concerned about we want highway together probably in the in the meeting room. And maybe a one or two select board members. Verizon will be remote on the big screen walking through their presentation mm -hmm. and then they'll have a you know Q and A type of session. But is it okay to schedule it during the day or does somebody have a preference for you know four o'clock in the afternoon and make the highway guys stay? Or do you want to do a three o'clock for an hour? Busiest day I've got right now. Okay, so like the end of four o'clock, four thirty. Three thirty, it could be. I mean, for me. Rolly, how about you? Well, three thirty, four o'clock. Three thirty would be. I couldn't make anything. Oh, okay. So okay. why, why do we go for three thirty, four o'clock, Monday through Thursday? Okay, that's all I needed. Okay. <laughs> I know it's virtual still. <laughs> yeah. um, and also, I'm just adding that we have um, um, we got some interesting resumes for the okay. financial <laughs> position. Um, the what position I'm talking to? For Allie's position. Oh, Allie's position. Yep. Yes. And um, uh, Ron and Chastity and I have been looking at them, and we have an initial interview with someone tomorrow and another one on Thursday. Um, we're going we're going with the top two who both interesting. Yeah. yeah. How many applicants did you have? Well I think we have ten. Yeah, I think we ended up with ten. I know. Yeah. I'm surprised too. Fortunate. Yeah. Well it is it, we it sort of they weren't coming and they weren't coming. So Ron because it wasn't particularly expensive, we tried Indeed, we tried. Indeed, um, we got some fascinating. Yeah. You know, that was you going. Okay. Well, that LinkedIn was good too. Hmm? That LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But but anyway, with this, so we thought we'd uh, and just checking, we'd we'd start with the first two, and hopefully one of the first two, you know, works out. But there were. We were very pleasantly surprised at the, at the number of responses. So I, we'll see what happens. That's all you can do with that. This same, we just scheduled uh, like a half an hour. Um, they both asked for virtual. Um, they're sort of okay. Let's let's see initially and see how it feels like. If there's a fit, you want to you want to pursue it. So we'll. We'll let you know as that goes. I think. Is there anything else? Or what's wrong? What's wrong with lower? Hmm? What's wrong with the blower? Lower. The blower? The blower. Mark, Mark called me the other day. No. Thus there you there's a reason. Huh? I said, thus there's a reason. <laughs> I never called me. Said it, it, it was parked upside the road on blue parts. I believe you 100%. And, and said something about a pin, broke a pin in it, blowing the, blowing the dirt off the road after it put the shoulders in. But I I presumed it was just a, like a link, link pin. But I've, I've seen it sitting there for a week now. This is the very first time I'm hearing about it. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> Somebody that could probably get it okayed and get it. Pushed in there as fast as possible, get the job done, and left out of the ballpark. Hard to believe. It is. It is. What's the town? What's the town's position on masks going to be? Because the governor sends each town to make their own rules and regs. Right. Well, we've been upstairs. When you go in upstairs, you, a mask is required. Oh, library. That's required. Yes, they require oh. masks. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, they require masks. We're still down here, it's still sort of, you know, sort of, again, we can sort of decide meeting by meeting. You know what, obviously is the, you know, the distance option is there for, you know, for folks that, um, <laughs> that have the good connections. 
Um, I, I had, we should probably have required. Yeah, probably, probably down here for meetings, go back to masks required. This is stunning the number of people. Oh, that's worse than it was last year. Yeah, of course, the kids are all back in school. Yeah. That's where you're picking up a lot of a lot of tests, yeah, you know, and a lot of kids. But I know so many people are going to have According to our uh, leaders there, it's because of so many Halloween parties. It has nothing to do with all the leaf people that came into the state. Oh, no. well, that's not, 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 really not, not meaning the checking with it. That's don't pull out with those from don't pull out with the tourist industry. Yeah, no more Halloween parties. I don't even know I want to have Halloween parties. Wow. That's what we're talking about. The age at this table is like, what Halloween party? Kids came to the door. Right? Like, oh, okay. All right. You just brought me a shitty. You crossed the threshold. They were all wearing masks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They were all wearing masks. Well, <laughs> okay. We got anything else? You good? Okay. We'll do adjourn. Oh, sure. Okay. All the papers in the driver saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? I'll read these. I'll read. Yeah. We offer. Yeah. Yep, okay. I'm going to sign up. Um, if somebody wants to shut the TV off or, or just leave it on, I think it times out by itself. There's a little black controller by the, um, the sound mixer. Mm -hmm.